Welcome back to the catch up here on Chris Cyborg's YouTube channel. I am James Lynch. That is not Chris Cyborg. Instead, we got the number two bantamweight in the Bellator rankings, Rafael Stotts. Rafael, how are you, man? Man, I'm doing pretty good, man. Can't complain. That's uh, great. Uh, again, happy to have you on here. Again, Chris is uh, booked up until her big fight at Bellator 300, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but uh, first, man, uh, how's your summer been? Obviously, the kids are back to school. You were just telling me off air uh, this week. Uh, how's everything going uh, summer wise? Man, it's been great. You know, I feel like I spent a lot of time, uh, was able to get a lot of quality time with my family. We went on some trips. Um, uh, yeah, we've just been pretty much enjoying the summer. So uh, it's been super nice. Um, now, like, we're kicking it in the overdrive. I feel like um, uh, the kids are back in school. They started, uh, my oldest is five. So he started kindergarten, you know what I mean? So it's exciting times in the spouse household. That's good, man. That's great. Uh, never fun to talk about a loss, but here we are. And I loved your response after the fight, by the way. A lot of fighters, you know, sometimes they'll say different things. You're like, look, man, it happened. I, I got caught. It, it happened. Um, you know, we've had a lot of time to kind of digest that one. It was a big fight. A lot was going into it. What did you take away yeah. the most from that fight against Patchy Mix? Um, you know, uh, I didn't really take a lot of, uh, take away a lot just because the fight, you know, I feel like ended uh, a lot prematurely. Um, there are things, you know, I feel like I could have done better, but I always feel like, you know, um, hindsight is twenty twenty. you know, and um, I, I could say I would have done a lot of the things differently and, and all this. One thing I do know, uh, one thing I know that I can control is um, well, pretty much the last two fights I've had, I've been feeling kind of like, uh, like sluggish. And I was like thinking it was like a part of me, uh, like getting older, you know what I mean? Or like I was like, maybe it was time for me to like hang it up. These last two camps. Uh, and it's not like I was um, like sluggish in the gym. I just felt more labored doing the things that I was doing. And I'm laughing about it now because it was it just came down to me like. I freaking didn't eat. I didn't follow the meal plan that I was supposed to be on. Like I had a, I got a nutritionist and I have a meal plan that I'm supposed to be on. And um, so they deliver the food to me and I freaking, I eat all the food they give me, but I was also supposed to supplement that food. Um, and also I was, I just messed up the meal plan completely because I, like a lot of people don't know this, but um, like the, the, the fight before this, you know, it was probably my uh, toughest weight cut. And then this last uh, fight, I actually passed out, which is like, I've, I've never had a problem, you know, couldn't wait, but I was actually malnutritioned the whole, like these last two camps, you know, so probably about like half a year. So, um, so that's the biggest thing I can take away. Again, I don't feel like I can take nothing away from the fight because, you know, my reactions was my reactions and everything happened in the fight. I made a mistake and he capitalized and, um, you know, that's that, but I know going forward, you know, I'll be like better prepared and I'll be ready to, you know, take on, uh, even more challenges. That's crazy. Okay, so a lot to kind of unpack there. Um, first and foremost, is this something you've kind of figured out now? It's just like you have to follow this plan so this type of stuff doesn't happen? Like, do you feel like you've kind of tackled this issue that was sort of hindering you, like you said, the last two fights? Yeah, so I, I feel like I've, I've tackled it and I've, I've just addressed it um, or I, I, I've noticed it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a big thing that I feel like uh, uh, that I just had to like figure out. It was like, oh man, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't eat what you were supposed to eat like um and that's why because again it was I, I was like um subconsciously you know and, and kind of consciously feeling like oh man i'm super like i've done eight rounds today but i'm like super tired after eight rounds like what's what's going on man it must be age or something you know what i mean and then this went on like the last two camps but what happened is I, I switched uh meal plans um that i was on and i just didn't freaking uh I didn't adjust, you know, how I, I should adjust. So I was literally like fighting malnutrition and uh, or training, I should say, training malnutrition. And then um, that's why I was feeling that way, like during camp. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as for like the fight, I feel like, you know, I'll just be I'll just be more confident and more, you know, uh, prepared, you know, for um, uh, my fights coming up. What about like in the gym now? Cause I'm sure you're training as well. Like we haven't seen you fight, but uh, do you just like, I'm sure you feel a difference there. Like you said, you were feeling sluggish. Now do you sort of feel yeah. like your old self or do you feel even exactly. better than you did before? I, I feel more of my old self. And, um, and that's another reason I wanted to take this or I got to take, or I was able to take this summer, um, just to let my body kind of recuperate, you know? Um, and yeah, I feel, I feel better, you know, which is, and I, and I laugh about it because it's like, duh, like you eat better, you feel better or you eat what you're supposed to eat. You know, you feel better. Um, and, but there was also like a time in my career, like early in my career, you know, where I felt like, man, 
uh, cutting weight is hard, but it was like a thing where like I thought cutting weight was you don't eat, you don't eat anything and you work out and you know you would get you know the returns from that, but it's um it's quite the opposite. So uh, yeah, I to be honest, I feel kind of stupid about saying it, but um, it's it's a mistake that I made that I'm able to move forward and get better with. So I'm I'm excited for the future. When do you want to get back in there? Again, you've been off since a little bit, and it's obviously good when you get finished in a fight to kind of take some time off. You mentioned the health issues. Ideally, when would you like to have that next fight? Um, So they're in talks. I'm in talks now um, about getting in there really soon. I don't know if I can talk about, you know, um, when and where and who it is um, because I haven't got contracts yet, and yeah. I want nobody to weasel their whack out of the contract because I also feel like now that I don't have the belt, I'm going to probably run into that thing where it's like, I don't want to go through Rafian and try to get to the belt. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I want to get in there soon. I'm hoping to get in there soon. I've been training and things. Um, so yeah, I want to get in there soon, and I want to try to get. You know, I got to get my the strap back. I got to get my you know uh, win back. I got to get you know a lot of stuff. So um, I know it starts with this fight that I'm gonna have. So um, yeah, real soon. I should I should be literally having news like real soon. Okay, well, that, that's good. Uh, is October's too soon? Because Bellator 300 is like a stack card. Uh, it's in San Diego. Is that, you know, again, we're talking hypothetically here so no one gets in trouble, but is that kind of what you would like? Like, would you want to be on that card? Because there's so many big names that, there. There's the title fights. Is that kind of what you're looking at? Yeah, that card is like super stacked, you know? I think it's like too stacked for me to be on. Um, okay. You know, but um, I, I mean, I would love to be, I would love to fight with all the legends that are fighting on Bellator 300. Also, Bellator 300 is like a, you know, a kind of century mark, you know, so I would love to fight on it. I don't believe that's it. I think I can divulge. That's not um, the fight that I'm, I'm, I'm offering. Okay. Okay. So we can kind of play a little uh, process of elimination here. What, what about I, opponents? Like we can kind of talk about that. If you look right? at the rankings, Let's talk about like how, what does he look like and what's his skin color? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> play, play like a game of clue or something, trying to uh, right. try and figure out exactly what it is. But, but who are some names out there right now that kind of interest yeah. you? You fought kind of the who's who already. Yeah, so I fought, and that's the thing. I fought kind of everybody in the top, um, uh, top five, top ten. Uh, well, not not top ten because I think they're moving. Um, you know, I'm I'm down to fight anybody. You know, I think yeah. Magomed just beat Sabatello. I'm fighting. Uh, what did or, you think of that, by I, the way? Sabatello getting finished in that fight. Yeah, he got finished in the. Uh, what was that? The second. The yeah. second and the third. You know, I thought he was doing pretty good up until he got finished. You know, I'm always happy to see him lose. So you know that. <laughs> that's not. I felt like, you no, know, I was happy for um, Mike Man. It, it, he's got a hell of a good team, man. That's something that, you know, I trained for. That's something that, I mean, he finished, I think, his last two fights with um, yeah. um, Guillotine. And then you have Barzola, who also fought um, Jalen Bates. Um, so it, those guys are, you know, good matchups. Um, I want I, I want to fight somebody that's going to um, kind of skyrocket me back to my rematch. I'm not even necessarily chasing the title. I want I want to have that fight back, you know, um, yeah. just for myself. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, so that's what I'm, um, I, I'm looking at anybody, anybody in there. Archuleta just won a, um, rising title, yeah. Rising title, you know, so I feel like the, the division is really stacked and it's, we got a lot of people in here, you know, um, I just hope, you know, people will be willing to, to uh, sign the other side of the contract with me. What do you think of that main event for Bellator? We've got Chris Cyborg and Kat Zingano finally fighting. Just your thoughts on the matchup. You know, Chris still pretty dominant, and Kat's obviously done quite well for herself since coming over to Bellator. Yeah, this is a fight that I feel like I've been waiting for for so long, and I'm just, I mean, I'm happy that we're here. I'm happy that we're here. I'm happy that they're fighting. Um, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, but yeah, I'm just, I'm happy to see this fight happen. I think these two women are you know, legends of the sport, their names are going to go down to history for like some of the most dominant, you know, uh, champions and former champions of uh, MMA. So, yeah, man, I I'm excited for the fight, you know, uh, as far as my pick, um, not because I'm on the side back board show, <laughs> but I feel like sideboard, you know, um, probably has a little uh, better physical attributes, you know, um, I know Kat is like a really, you know, a uh, good wrestler, a really good grappler. Um, I just feel like, um, Kat is, uh, it, it, she's got kind of like a, uh, uh, phys her physical attributes, her phys physical attributes. I even, I, uh, like I, I fought on a car with her and even like me, uh, standing, or uh, I think we were, we were, I was on her undercard. Like I was a co-man yep. and, yeah, and, um, she was weighing in next to me. And this was like when she was like dieted down, uh, she's like a massive freaking, uh, woman, you know? Um, so 
yeah, I think that's going to be a tough task, you know, for anybody, you know. And aside from that, her fighting skills are, you know, um, next to no one, you know. So, um, but that's, yeah, who I'm going with. Okay, fair enough. And by the way, that's the co-main event. I forgot the main event is actually Usman Nurmagomedov and Brent Primus. But uh, oh, that card is... Brent, yeah, which is a banger too. That lightweight yeah. tournament is freaking turning out to be a freaking bangers, you know. Uh, Brent Primus, which I think was an alternate... Yep. Um, like coming in and then he beat the, uh, the French guy. I forget his name. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited for that. Cause that's another fight where you got, um, uh, uh Usman, uh, Usman Nomega Madoff, who's been, you know, uh, flawless everywhere. You know, um, I feel like Brent Primus is, is a really good grappler. His grappling gets, uh, kind of under, what do you call it? Uh, not uh, undervalued, uh, underrated. Overlooked. Yeah. Yeah, underrated. You know, I feel like he's got really good grappling, and his um, and his stand up is you know uh, uh, really good too, and he he mixes the, the the two well. So I think that's gonna be another you know tough test for uh. I mean, I'm excited to see it. I don't really know who's gonna win because um, I, I'm excited to see it though. How are you dealing with these Bellator sale rumors? I know, I know a lot of you guys on the roster, you don't know what the future's looking like. I mean, it, they are still running like business like usual. Like Scott Coker yeah. said, they're going to be doing events beyond Bellator 300. We've also heard like, you know, your good buddy there, Sergio Pettis, is re-signed with the promotion. So it seems like things are as normal, but you can, I'm sure, ignore the noise outside of there. How are you dealing with it? Yeah, I'm just pretty much in the dark. Um, I actually just got off, my, off the phone with my manager. That's why I was like a little late to the video. Um, I, I, we really don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on, but you know, I'm gonna just continue business as, as normal. You know, I got, I got, you know, things I got to handle. I don't, I can't really, uh, worry about things outside of my control, you know, whatever happens, you know, I'm gonna put my best foot forward. I feel like I'm one of the best mar mixed martial arts, mixed martial artists in the world. And I'm gonna continue to do that. And I'm gonna continue to be great at that and, um, let the other chips kind of fall where they may. I don't yeah. really, I, I literally don't know. <laughs> like, I'm in the dark. I don't know, like, nothing. Not that I've, like, been really asking or trying to find those answers, but, um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of, just, just focus on, focus on me, you know, and that's all I can really focus on. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, also the, the thought of, you know, a sale or, like, change of promotion is, like, scary on one end, but it's, like, exciting on another end, you know, because you, you hear about, like, maybe PFL buys it, Maybe somebody else buys it. Um, and yet yeah, it sounds exciting. Like, like everybody's got like kind of cool uh, promotional ideas and things like that. So like uh, hypothetically, it sounds like a, uh, it could be great, you know, um, yeah. but at, on the other hand, it could be not great. I don't know. So, yeah. so I can't really worry about it. I'm just like kind of big focus on me. Before we go, uh, we're a couple weeks removed now. Sean O'Malley knocking out Aljamain Sterling. What was your reaction to that? I mean, yeah, you know, is I feel like it's close to what happened to me, you know. I mean, I can't fault him, you know. Um, again, hindsight is twenty twenty. Sean O'Malley did a, an excellent job, you know. This is the fight game, you know. I don't want to say it's like a flip in the uh, flip of the coin, but it's protect yourself at all times for a reason, you know. Um, anything can happen. That's why we love MMA, you know, and that's why we have the fights, you know. Going into that fight. A lot of people thought, you know, um, and, and including myself, thought Al Jermaine, just his skill set was too much for Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley proved everybody wrong, you know, and you can't fault him for that. He went in there and he did everything he needed to do to get that position. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm happy for him. You know, I think uh, Al Jermaine will come back. And I think, um, you know, uh, yeah, that division is a, is a is a exciting division, too. So, yeah, I, I just thought it was crazy. It was wild. <laughs> it was wild. Certainly was. Hey, Raphael, glad to hear you're all healthy, man. Excited for the next one. We'll be keeping tabs on that. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, uh, sponsors, social media, anything like that, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, man. I'm actually starting a uh, podcast. Um, oh, cool. It's probably going to start uh, mid-September. Um, we're doing like content for it now, which I'm finding like joy and I'm uh, finding like people all around Houston because that's where I'm from. And we're, gonna, we're talking over food and we're talking to like influential figures around Houston and um, I'm pretty excited about it. We're like four episodes in, you know, um, but we haven't like released anything. So uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, also, I want to thank my, um, the team at Cricket, Cricket Wireless, you know, um, they stuck with me, you know, uh, throughout this whole process. Um, also, I want to thank, you know, my management, um, Sucker Punch, uh, also Everest, um, my PR uh, manager and um, yeah, man. 
Uh, everybody, just be on the lookout because I got fight news coming soon, and uh, I'm ready to start climbing again. Love it. All right, man. We are done recording. I will uh, get this episode.